Hey everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. If you love saving money on home decor, today's video is going to be perfect for you. We are gonna be making high-end DIY room decor using simple Dollar Tree items. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Let's jump in and get started. We're gonna be starting this project with one of these skewers from Dollar Tree. These are the really big ones that they have this little wood craft box, and then also one of these wood rings, all of these from Dollar Tree. So what we're gonna start doing is creating the actual structure. I'm going to lay this wood ring here in the middle of the box, and then I'm going to line up the skewer from the ring to the outside edge of the box, and then I'll cut two pieces and get those as close to the same length as I can. Once we have those pieces cut, we can move on to the vertical pieces, and this is where you can customize it to however you would like. You can make these longer or shorter, make a few of them at different heights. I just eyeball that and cut it to where I thought I wanted it to be, and then I'm cutting two of those pieces to be the exact same height. Now originally I was going to stain the bottom and then paint the top part black. I ended up painting it all black so if you do do it that way it'd probably be easier to just start with gluing these vertical pieces to the box first and then gluing the rest of it to that. So I did a little bit backwards here but either way will work. And all I'm doing here is just using some hot glue to glue all of these skewer pieces together and then gluing those to that middle circle. I like to let the glue cool down a little bit and then I'll form it around those joints. You don't have to do that because it can still be a little bit hot, but that's something that I like to do. It just makes those seams a little bit cleaner. And this is where I would say it's it would be easier gluing those together because it was kind of a pain to hold this all together and then glue those. If the vertical pieces were already glued to the box, then you wouldn't have to worry about holding those up. They would already be stable and then you could just glue the other pieces to those. And to add a little strength to the base here, I'm going to add some hot glue on both sides of the skewer here. It's just gonna make sure that that's held in place really good instead of just having one little bead of hot glue underneath the skewer there, we have it connecting in three different places. And the last part here is just to spray paint everything. I'm using the Krylon matte black paint. And that's really a super simple project, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful. For this wall hanging piece, we're gonna start by using one of these Dollar Tree hula hoops. And the first thing that I'm gonna be doing here is removing this sticky wrap that's gone all the way around here. It's just the design of the hula hoop. You can easily just remove that. And then also pull this little connector out and you can pour out all the little beads that are inside there. And then make sure you don't throw that connector away because we will wanna put that back in and connect these two pieces. Now the wood pieces that I'm gonna be using for this project are from Walmart and Dollar Tree. This is a steak that you can get from Walmart for just under $2, I believe. And this is in the section where you find like the for sale signs and the house number signs. There's a little box there that you can find these steaks in. And I'm gonna hold that up and we'll end up cutting and end off of there. And then also what I'm gonna be using are these skewers. These are the really big skewers from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna be using a few of those to create our overall design. When we're lining all of this up, we wanna make sure that our stake is right in the middle and that it's covering up the seam where the hula hoop meets and connects together. And then I'm going to line up three of the skewers above that and three below that middle stake piece. And one thing you want to make sure of when you're cutting these skewers is that they don't stick out too far past the hula hoop because then you will see them from the front. This is all the back side. So we're going to line these up and then end up gluing these here on the back. We'll flip it over and then we'll glue the wood stake on the front of this piece. So just make sure that these aren't too long to where they're sticking off the end of the hula hoop. 
And then I did want to mention the little tool I'm using is just some dog nail clippers from Dollar Tree to cut these skewers. They work really well for these little skewers and wood dowels. Once we have those pieces cut out, we can move on to gluing those. And remember, this is going to be the back of our project. So we want to keep that stake right in place and make sure that it is covering up the seam. The last thing you want to do is start gluing these down and notice that that has moved or that when we placed it down, it's not covering it. It won't be a huge deal, but it just makes it overall cleaner if we can cover up that seam with that middle stake. Once we have those glued down, we can move on to painting this. So go ahead and remove that stake. We can flip it over and then we're going to add a paint to all of this. Even though the hula hoop is kind of a black color, we want to make sure that it's the same color as the stake. So I'm using that Krylon matte black spray paint. Now, two things that we want to do here, we want to adjust the size of the stake and we want to get rid of that pointed end. So what I'm doing is laying this down and this is totally up to you. If you want to have this stick out further um, a little bit or just have it come up to the edge of the hula hoop, that's totally up to you. I want mine to stick out a little ways. So I'm just going to do a couple quick measurements and then cut off the end so that we have this completed and cut. Before staining this piece, I'm just going to go ahead and sand it down a little bit and the end where I cut, especially just so we have a smoother surface. Then I'm using this early American Minwax stain to go ahead and give this a little bit deeper of a color. One thing I like to do to keep this a little bit lighter of a color is I will stick my rag in the stain and then I'll try and dry it off a little bit. And then that way I'm not completely saturating the wood. I'm just using some of the damp cloth or whatever you're using to apply the stain to rub on there. And that way it gives it a lighter color instead of really saturating and soaking into the wood. Next, I'm just using another piece of the skewer and you can cut that to the size that you'd like as well. And that's where we're going to start wrapping around our yarn and creating our hanging yarn piece. So when measuring your yarn, what you want to do is pull it out to the length that you want it to be overall. And then we want to double that because what we're going to be doing here is taking the yarn and we're going to essentially be wrapping it in half to go over the skewer. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. So whatever length you want, you want to make sure that you're doubling that length. For this project, I'm using four strands of yarn. I'm going to fold that in half and then I'm going to loop it over the skewer and then pull it back through itself. And that's how we're going to connect all of these. Now, if you wanted to, you could definitely add more strands of yarn. It's going to kind of make that design a little bit thicker. That is totally up to you. And then I'm just going to repeat that process using the four strands, folding it over itself and then looping over that skewer until we're all the way done. And then what I ended up doing just to kind of hold everything in place is I glued each end of these down so that keeps all that yarn right in place and you don't have to worry about it falling off the side. For this project, I only ended up using one roll of yarn. That's all I had on hand. So I had to cut my skewer down a little bit, but I actually like the size it ended up coming out to. So if you were wondering, this is only one roll of yarn for this project. The last few touches here are to glue our wood stake down and then also our yarn piece. So I'm going to make sure again that this is going over the seam. I'm going to eyeball that right in the center, glue down the wood piece, and then we're going to run some hot glue right on top here of this uh, yarn dowel and then glue that on the bottom of our wood stake. This is a little bit more in depth of project. We like to keep projects as simple as we can, but I think really it's still a simple project. It doesn't take a ton of time, but looks absolutely beautiful. The last little part here is to cut this whatever shape you desire. I would recommend if when you're doing this, just hang it up and then you can cut this however you'd like.
For this project, we're gonna be making a storage basket and we've done a few variations over the years of these baskets, but this one, I found this white fabric from Dollar Tree and then also finally found the big roll of faux leather from Dollar Tree. So I was excited to use those and wanted to create a basket for you. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is take two of these white fabric rolls and I'm going to glue those on the inside of this basket. That's gonna cover up all of that blue plastic and then also give it a really nice fabric interior. To attach the fabric, I'm going to line that up with the top of the basket and actually fold it over onto the outside part. And then I'm going to use some hot glue and glue that down all the way around the edge. Now, the reason why I use two of these is one just wouldn't quite cover up the interior. So if you have a bigger piece, maybe from Walmart or somewhere um, cheap, it may actually cost you a little bit less and you can cover all that with just one piece. I know a lot of times doing these baskets, the rope can get a little bit expensive because you have to use so many pieces from Dollar Tree. So you may wanna check on Amazon for the fabric and the rope. You can usually buy a lot bigger thing of rope and it's fairly cheap as well compared to the Dollar Tree options. I like to try and push this down in as far as possible so I know where this needs to sit and then where the glue needs to go on the outside. You will have some extra pieces of this fabric that you can just simply cut off. We want to try and keep that as minimal as possible, but in the end, what we're going to be doing is gluing the rope all the way around the outside of the basket. So it's going to cover up any of those fabric pieces that you can see on the outside anyway. Once we have all that glued down, we can move on to wrapping our rope around the outside. So I'm gonna be using the Dollar Tree rope, both this normal nautical rope and then the white rope as well. To start this rope, all I'm gonna be doing is picking a side to be the back. The reason why I do that is so that Whenever we need to cut a rope or when a rope ends, we can make sure that it ends on the back and all of those seams are on the same side. The last thing that you wanna do is wrap this around and then all of a sudden you run out of rope and it's on the front and it just doesn't look good. So I'll show you what I mean by making sure that it ends on the back side. But what I'm doing here is just gluing it on the very bottom and I keep flipping the bucket down onto the table so that I know that rope is covering up the very bottom of the bucket. So as we wrap this around, there is going to be a little bit of extra rope that we're going to want to cut off to avoid any seams in the front. So what we want to avoid is wrapping this around to use up all of the rope and then we end up in the very front and we have seams, it's just not gonna look good. So what we wanna do is glue up to the back part here where we first started and then cut the rope so that all of those connections or those seams are in the back and that way it looks really nice and clean on the sides and the front of our basket. After I've used one, I'm gonna add one more of the same rope and go around this a couple more times and then make sure that I end it in the back just like the other one. Now that we have those first two ropes on, I'm gonna move on with the white rope and that's what I'm gonna wrap the rest of this with. Now, all we're doing here is doing the same process that we just did with the other rope. I'm gonna start here in the back, wrap it around, and this one is actually a little bit softer so you can pull this tighter and extend that rope a little bit, but wrap this around a few times and then make sure that we end in the back. And then we'll do that all the way up until we cover all of the fabric and we end at the very top.
Once we have our basket completely covered with the rope and then the interior with the fabric, we can move on to adding the handles. Now this is what I was talking about as far as the Dollar Tree leather. So this is kind of in the crafting section with the other vinyl that you can use for your Cricut. It sits right next to those and it's just a big roll of this full leather which I think is fun. I saw this color, the white and the black as well. So we're gonna be using this brown color to create our handles. Now all I'm doing here is laying this and eyeballing how big I want this. This is totally up to you. You don't even have to do this type of handle if you want to add a different style. You can really customize this project however you'd like. But I'm going to cut this and then fold it in half for the other handle and that's what I'm gonna use for both sides here. I'm going to wrap this over itself and glue it down just to kind of cover up any of those cut marks. And then when we place this on the basket, we can adjust the size as well. So if it's a little bit too big, we can fold it up underneath itself or cut it again if we need to. But all I'm doing here is lining it up with the rope. I'm gonna glue that down with hot glue. And then on the other side, I felt like it was a little bit too big. So I'm gonna actually fold it over itself again and then glue it down to the actual fabric on the inside of this basket. Now you could leave the project just as it is, but I like to add a little bit more to it. I think it just helps elevate the project a little bit more. So what I'm gonna be using is some of these thumbtacks also from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna spray paint them in this matte black color, and then I'm going to add them to the inside and the outside. They're just gonna act as like little buttons or tacks that are holding the actual leather handle to the basket. And that's it for this project. It's a little bit more time consuming because we have to put the fabric on the inside and then wrap the rope all the way around, but it's really a simple project. It's just a little more time consuming, but I think in the end, it's a lot of fun to create something that looks really beautiful and that looks like something you could find at a store and it only costs you a few dollars to make. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more Dollar Tree DIYs, make sure to click through right here to our playlist and you can see a lot of other fun ideas. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.